we have a projectile motion question. Particle P moving under gravity following this curve as shown, which is a, which is a quadratic. We're told that the velocity initially, instead of being given the speed and the direction, we're told that it's actually going to be U and vertically it's going to be V. Then we're asked to determine, in terms of u, v, and g, the distance o, c. So this one here. All right, now to deal with this sort of problem, we need to use suvat, o to c. And first of all, I'm going to look vertically. So, so I'm just trying to fit everything in. So, okay, this is going to be vertically, and up is going to be positive. Because here's the key thing, going from O to C, the displacement is actually zero, even though the distance is sort of going up and then back down, we would add those two together. The displacement, which is how far you're going from your origin, is zero vertically. U is then going to be equal to capital V. A is going to be minus G. We've been asked to work in terms of G here. G is 9.8 acting downwards, or G acting downwards in this case. So it's going to be minus g because I'm applying suvat up. Now, why do I want to do all this? Because in a minute, we're going to go horizontally, where we have suvat as well. A is 0, and u is going to be capital U. V is therefore also going to be capital U because there's no acceleration. And if we want to work out the displacement, we're going to need the time. So I need to work out the time for this one vertically, and then I can put it in to the horizontal one. So let's do it. Let's go for s equals ut plus a half at squared, because we've got everything apart from v, or we're trying to find t, of course. So 0 is going to be vt minus a half gt squared. I'm going to factorize out t, v minus a half gt. So t equals 0, which is the very start. Or we're going to get um, a half gt is v, or t is equal to 2v over g. That then goes into here. So now, if I want to work out what oc is, that's going to be this here, we can apply s equals ut. So I'm just sort of uh, jumping up to here because a bit of space. Now it's it is a half pl plus a half at squared, but a is zero. So it's just s e it's just um, speed distance time we're sort of using here, although displacement velocity time. And so it's going to be u times the two v over g from vertical direction. And therefore, I'm going to get two u v over g. And there we have it. That is our distance OC. Let me maybe just make that clear. All right, let's scroll down the page and look at the next part of the question. Just going to make a little note, though, that that was the answer. OC is equal to 2UV over G. Okay, next up, we're told that V passes through A and B, each at a height H above the ground and a distance D apart, as shown. We're asked to write the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity at A. So immediately, we're going to get the same horizontal velocity because there's no acceleration. And then vertically, it's going to be still going up, but now by a different amount. So I'm going O to A. This time the displacement is going to be H. U is going to be that capital V. And I can apply, um, what can I apply? I don't know T. So I'm going to use a half v squared 
equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared is going to be capital V squared minus 2gh. And therefore v is going to be the square root of v squared minus 2gh. There's going to be a negative, actually, which would, uh, which would correspond with uh, this one over here, in fact. So I'm only going to take the positive. I'm not even going to like talk about the negative, to be honest. And that is going to be the vertical component. Okay, nice one. And we're asked to hence determine an expression for d in terms of u, v, g, and h. Now there is a long way to do this. You can consider a to b and find the time that it would take um, using the fact that the displacement from a to b is actually zero. Uh, put that time into the horizontal to work out the horizontal distance. But there's a much quicker way because we can compare part C to part A. In part A, we were going from A O to C. We had the initial velocity vertically and horizontally, and we were trying to work out the horizontal distance, which we did with a little calculation. It's basically just a mini version of that. So I can just really quickly use the result from um, A. Using part A, D, is going to equal C O C was equal to two times the initial horizontal velocity, which is still the same horizontal velocity at A as shown, times by V, the vertical velocity at the start. Now here, it's actually going to be this V squared minus two G H. So I can just substitute that straight in. And then instead, uh, well, actually not instead, we are still dividing by g. And that is actually the answer. That's all we've got to do. So the mark scheme, in fact, allows you to just write that straight down without any working whatsoever, um, I, which is essentially what I've done. I've just explained verbally the ideas behind it. So just to say, if you, want, if you did do this the full way, then it would look a lot like your argument for part A, but it would just be the s is zero, u would actually be a different value of the, it would be this v squared minus 2gh square rooted. You get exactly the same here. You get the time, but with v replaced by that square rooted formula. Then for the displacement horizontally, you'd get the same stuff here. So the time, you would just carry this through differently. And hence, you can see, hopefully now, without me doing the whole thing, where y is the same result, but with v replaced by this new velocity. Finally, we're given that the direction of motion through uh, as P passes through A is inclined to the horizontal at an angle. So I've drawn the vectors in, but I've not actually drawn like a little triangle to display the motion. So it would look a little bit like this. U here, and then V squared minus 2GH here. At an angle theta, where tan theta is equal to a half. So we're trying to now work out an expression for V, capital V, in terms of G, D, and H. So I can apply trigonometry and I can write down that tan theta is also the opposite over the adjacent, so it's V squared minus 2 G, H. So that is just going to equal a half. And therefore, the square root of v squared minus 2gh is going to equal a half u. Um, now what do I need? Okay, I'm trying to basically get capital V in terms of g, d, and h, so I need to replace u. So I need to rearrange this formula up here. So in fact, u is going to become, I'm going to be doing d times g, divided by 2, 
and then I'm times in by that, so I'm going to do 1 over that on the right-hand side as well, so it's going to become this. Now, I, I times true by u, and I could have kept it all on the left-hand side, but it's a little bit easier to now see that I could multiply through by the square root and simply have v squared minus 2gh equals, and it's going to be a half times dg over 2, so it's going to be dg over 4. You can get there all in one go, like without rearranging, in which case it would be square root of v squared minus 2gh divided by u, so basically I would times by 1 over u, and I would keep change flip and do this. So that could alternatively work out. We would then divide by 2, um, times by dg, deal with the square roots, we'd get, we'd get the same answer. So now I've got v squared, is going to equal dg over 4 plus 2gh. Hey, we're nearly there because it's asked us to get it in terms of dg and h, so I just need to square root. Remember, it's, uh, it's positive this velocity, so I can ignore the negative square root. v is going to be the square root of dg over 4 plus 2gh. In the mark scheme, they and this is not essential, by the way. They factorize out a quarter and then square root it, so it becomes a half. And then this would become, uh, I've taken out a quarter, so actually this would become 8gh. And then they factorize out inside the square root of g. Yeah, arguably that is a little bit tidier, but I mean, it's absolutely fine to stick with this as well. So that is probably the most awkward thing about this question. You know, part A is um, oops. part A is something you should have seen before when you deal with sort of projectile motion formulae and things like that. Part B is uh, this is where it gets a little bit different, but that's okay. C you can take a shortcut on, and D C is the sort of unseen bit, but I hope that makes sense.